Well, hello everybody. Good morning. Welcome back to Herbie's Garage. Today I'm going to be working on my 2023 Life in KPM 200. And this is going to be another viewer requested video. I did a video on um, doing a valve adjustment complete from taking all the plastics and seat and tank and everything off, doing a valve adjustment, putting everything back on. And it was requested that I do it on this bike, which this is going to take a little bit longer because really it has more things to move on it so bear with me if you want to see this whole procedure and i'm going to do the whole thing so this may take an hour after i edit it maybe a little more who knows so hopefully you'll enjoy it so let's go ahead and get started okay we'll get started right here by taking these panels off this one i'll start on this one first and there's four screws on here you only need to remove three don't take this one out you don't need to and I usually like to use a ratchet and a five millimeter hex to take these off, but for the sake of time, I'm gonna use my impact. This is gonna make it a lot faster. Now once you take those three out, pop the pin out down here at the bottom on this side, and then there's a pin here in the front. You gotta pop it out. And then it'll lift off. You can see there's one right here and there's one right here. Next, we'll take this panel off, and it's an eight millimeter bolt. And then the front, it just has a screw, Phillips head screw, JIS or whatever. This is a JIS screwdriver. And then this just pops out. It's got one pop pin right in the middle at the top. And we'll set this aside. Then once we get all this removed, we get a six millimeter and take this bolt out for the seat. There's a bolt and a washer co collared washer on it. Set that aside and we'll go to the other side. Okay, same thing on this side. We'll take these three screws out. Pop it out at the bottom, pop it out at the bottom up here in the front, and lift it off. Just one eight millimeter. Phillips head screw. Pop this out. Got a pop pin right there in the middle at the top, just like the other side. Now we'll take this bolt out for the seat. Bolt and collared washer. Now this seat's a little bit different than most of them. Most of them tuck in the front. This one tucks in the back. So you got to lift up on the front of it and then pull it that way. And it pulls it out. See it tucks in right here. Now it's time to remove the gas tank. So we're going to take a couple things off on this side over here. We're going to take off this hose that's attached to the gas tank. But we need to get down in here and get this clamp off. This is on the charcoal canister. Then just grab a hold of the vacuum line. You can probably pull it by hand, kind of turn it, and pop it off. And then this, this is tucked inside of this zip tie. You just want to pull that out, free that up, and get this ready to be pulled out from the other side. And then right up here is your gas line where it attaches to your fuel rail. Or your fuel injector it's got two little push pins on the side you want to push down on it to kind of relieve the pressure squeeze it and then lift it off and when you do it's going to leak some gas so i've mentioned this before in another video you can buy this at harbor freight where i bought mine and on the inside of the kit 
it has a bunch of different plugs. Just take one of the blue ones out, one of these blue plugs. I have one out already. This has a rubber plug and it has caps both in it. I've used both. The caps are kind of flimsy, but these little plugs work pretty well. So I'm going to push down, squeeze it, and then I'm going to lift off. Like that. See, gas is coming out of it. So I'm going to shove that plug in the hole. Like that, and that'll stop the gas from leaking. Now you got to be careful when you pull this tank off because this line could break, so be really easy with it. We're going to do this a little different when we put it back in. And then on this side, you can pull the wire down and you'll see a connector right back here. See this white connector? That's for your fuel sending unit. Go ahead and release that one so that'll be taken care of for the one on this side. Now we'll go to the other side. Okay, this is going to be kind of difficult for me to do and show you at the same time, but I'll try. But there's three plugs underneath here for the gauges on the tank. You want to separate each one. And don't worry about um, mixing these up because these only go in one way. And as you can see, it has a, a lock on the one, and you just push down on it and pull it off. That one was hard to get off. All right, there's two. And then there's just a little small one left. And that pops off. So there's three of them. And then here at the front, I don't think I could show you this, but you'll feel it. It's right about here. There's a, an electrical connection for the fuel pump. And you just push down on that tab and slides off. This is an easy one to take off. Now we just have one 10 millimeter bolt here in the back. We'll take that one off, get it out of the way. Now we should have everything free in order to take this tank off. So you lift this up in the back and then it just slides backward. Now what I'm gonna caution you about is that gas line. That gas line is going to want to get hung up in there so be real slow and easy with that you don't want to break your fuel pump fitting and you don't want to break your line if you got smaller hands you can take it off at the tank which would be better but for myself my hands are too big to get in there i'll show you in a minute but you want to try to wiggle this line out of here And then pull it all out like that. Now once you take your tank off and you set it on the floor or on a bucket or something, just make sure that it doesn't uh, push on this fuel pump and the fittings on the bottom. So I just prop mine up with a 2x6 to get it up off the ground in the front. I went ahead and took this off and we're going to put it back on. So whenever we uh, put the tank in, we don't have to fight this line to get it in through the opening and everything and uh, snap it in. So we're gonna go ahead, we, I went ahead and removed this and I'm gonna show you the way this works is it's got two things on the side that you push. And when you do, it forces open the lock to allow you to pull the line off. It's real simple to do, no special tools required at all. We'll put that back on later. Next, we're going to take this grill guard off in the front. Two Phillips screws, one on this side and one on the other. Then there's two 5mm bolts in the center holding it.
And the reason we're taking this guard off is we want to get better access to our uh, valve adjustment port. In order to do that, we need to move the radiator. Well, we're not actually going to remove the radiator. We're just going to move it out of the way. All right, we're going to take this one here in the front off. It's a five millimeter as well. This is what holds the radiator in place. This holds the top of it, and then the bottom has two pins that drop down into two rubbers. Okay, we got that separated. So all you have to do is pull this up. You have to wiggle it a little bit, and there's two pins at the bottom. The rubber came off with this one, <laughs> but it goes down in a hole down here like that. All right, so before we tie this out of the way, we are going to take our spark plug out so we can do our valve adjustment so we can set our timing. This makes it a lot easier to turn the engine over. This is a 16 millimeter. You can just use a regular socket or spark plug socket. I just grabbed a regular socket for this one. See how she's burning. Oh yeah, that's looking really, really good. It's not burning very lean at all. Now all I want to do is I want to find a location where I'm not going to poke a hole in this. And just tie this out of the way. I've got a nice little bracket there made for it. Now we'll take our 8 millimeter and we'll loosen these two bolts. And like I've said before, you got to do this a little each time. Kind of work it back and forth. That one there is kind of tough coming out for some reason. I think I remember that the last time I did this valve adjustment. This one here was a little tough. I don't know if there's some coating on the threads on this one. No, it doesn't look too bad. And in case you're wondering, this is the exhaust port. And the way you know that it's the exhaust port is your exhaust pipe is right here. So your exhaust valve is going to be the one closest to the exhaust pipe. And we'll pop that off. Now we have clear access to our adjustment. We'll do the same thing to the intake side. Without the gas tank on there, it sure makes it easier, and it makes it easier to film for sure. Now, once you take these two bolts out, just get them out of the way before you take your cover off. You don't want to take a chance on dropping it down in the engine. As you can see, it's got an O-ring on it that seals it. Okay, we're going to take the plug out of the bottom. So we could uh, get to the access to be able to turn the engine over. And it's got an O-ring seal as well. We're not going to remove this plug. I'm going to take these two 8mm bolts loose up here at the top. One. And there's the other. Now we're going to pop this cover off. 
like that. And it's got a big O-ring seal around it. So you don't have to worry about it leaking when you put it back on. And if you wonder which way this goes on, it's got lettering on. If you put it the other way around, the lettering will be upside down. Plus, it's got a wide flange at the bottom that it doesn't have at the top. So it only goes in one way. Okay, I'm going to bring you in closer so you can see where I'm lining this up at. And I'm going to be turning this down here. I'm going to have it close, so close you're not going to be able to see me with this turning it. But when you turn this, you put it in here with a 14 millimeter. And it's best to use a breaker bar. Don't use a ratchet because it's easier to control with a breaker bar. And go counterclockwise. Just like this. Like you're loosening a bolt. You want to go counterclockwise. Okay, now we're going to set the timing. And what we're going to do is down below here, we're going to turn that breaker bar I showed you counterclockwise. And we're going to set the timing up here. So what we need to do is see this is the camshaft right here. This is a keyway in the camshaft. If you look off to the side, it has a line. We want that keyway, which is lined up with the line, to come around to where it's lined up with this embossed section up here at the top. And once you get that set, you're good. See, right now it's exactly 180 degrees out. That's top dead center on exhaust stroke. So we want to bring this around to where this line lines up with that embossed section right here. See this line is coming around right here is the embossed section right there. You just want to go slow till that lines up perfectly. Just like that. Now see, the key way is at the top. The line is lined up with the embossed section up here at the top. Just in case you didn't see the embossed section, you could see it clearly here. It's right there. That's what you want to line it up with. If you have that lined up, you're good to go. You're perfectly in time to adjust your valve. The exhaust valve is a 0.12 millimeter. So I, what I do is I use a 0.15 millimeter as my no-go and a 0.12 as my go. Now if you put this in here and it fits perfectly, which mine has tightened up a little bit, I've got about a thousand miles on mine, and I want to caution you before you do this, make sure your engine is stone cold. Don't do this on a warm engine because you're going to have your readings all messed up. Don't do that. Engine has to be cold. Let it sit overnight. Now see, that fits, but it's really, really tight. So we, want, we might want to adjust that just a little. No, it goes in pretty good. All right, now that one goes in. It's a little bit snug. I wish I could get my hand in there without getting in the camera view, but it's going to be impossible. So that fits in there good and snug. So we'll try the next size bigger, which is a 0.15 millimeter. And that does not go at all. This is where a lot of people run into problems. They just use the go method. They find a feeler gauge that'll fit in there. Oh, that fits, slips in there really good. That's nice. That's perfect. Well, it might be off way more than what you think. So be sure and do the no-go method as well to make sure that that's set perfectly. You don't want any problems with that later. Now that's set perfectly, so I'm not going to fool with that because I can't really video this. I can't really show this very well uh, with my hands all in the way adjusting it. So we're going to move to the intake, and we're going to show you on that one. Now I've got you set up where you can see the best. I don't know if I could do this from the other side, but I'm going to try. I think I can. So this side is a 0 0.08 millimeter for my go and a 0 0.10 for my no-go. And we'll check it and see. And that one goes in. 
Now we'll check our no-go and see if it'll go or not. It goes in too, so my intake is loose. I'm going to have to tighten my intake up. I'm going to take my pit posse tool and I'm going to loosen this up. <clears throat> okay. Now that I've got my nut loose, I'll put my proper adjustment in there. I like to take a wrench. I like to take a ratcheting wrench and put over my pit posse, slide everything together like that, and then you can make your adjustment. Make sure that you have everything on. I have to make sure I got my lock nut wrench on there. Okay, now I'm going to bring that down to where it just barely touches. All right, that's good. Now I'm going to hold my adjustment and I'm going to ratchet down my lock nut. And I'll check the adjustment. Feels pretty good. It's got a slight drag. It might be just a little on the loose side, but we'll see. Yeah, I can get that in, so I'm going to have to tighten this just a little bit more. All right, I'm going to slide that in. All right, I'm going to take my pit posse with my ratcheting wrench. I'm going to loosen it. Loosen the lock nut. Then I'll drop my adjusting tool down in the hole. All right, now I'm going to check my adjustment again. To get your feeler gauge in there, you just run this down to where you feel a slight drag. Right there. I'm going to hold it. I'm going to switch my ratcheting wrench. Tighten it down. Okay, now I can take everything out. And we'll check it again. Yeah, that feels tighter. That feels good. Yep, now that one won't go, so that adjustment is perfect. Okay, now we're done with our adjustment. We need to put everything back. So get you a, a cap of oil and just dip your finger in it and lubricate your O-ring. We want to do this on every O-ring. Okay, then we'll tighten this up just a little at a time. You gotta practice what you preach, Herbie. <laughs> And be really careful when you're tightening this. You don't want it to slip off and break something over here. Don't, don't do that. That would not be good. The snug goes down good. Remember, it's got an O-ring seal on it, so it doesn't have to be gorilla tight. Same thing for this one.
Now I have a thousand miles, like I said, since the last valve adjustment. And my valve barely moved. I don't really think it needed a valve adjustment, but it was close. So it'll make it run just a little bit better, probably get a little bit better fuel economy because the intake was a little bit too large. So we adjusted that and that'll make that even a little bit better than what it was. And it was running really good as it was. I think, I have to look in the book, but I think it's got like 3,000 something miles between intervals of valve adjustment. So once you get your valve set, they should stay set for quite a while. I'm doing this basically for demonstration to everybody that has not done it on this bike yet. It's always nice to see somebody take the gas tank off and stuff because, you know, there's not a lot of videos on this bike on doing maintenance. There is some, but we got to make sure that we get things done and, and do it correctly if we can. Snug that. Snug that. Good to go. Now we'll go ahead and we'll put our radiator in. You want to put these two posts down in the holes. Line them up. Slide it down in. And then this should line up in the front. And we'll put our bolt in. Okay. Now we'll go ahead and put our spark plug in while we're here. I really like the easy access of the spark plug on this and a lot of things are easily accessed all right and we'll snap this on listen for the click now we'll go ahead and take this gas line and we'll feed it through and get it ready and just snap that on Okay, now we'll take our plug and we'll put a little bit of oil on that O-ring. That O-ring actually looked a little dry. And when you're putting these plugs in, if it feels like it's not going in straight, go backwards until so you feel it snap in like that. Then you can go clockwise and snug it up. Then we'll take our cover, dip our finger in the oil. This is a pretty big O-ring, uh, so I'm gonna use two dips. Put our cover on. Put our cover on and line the bolts up, bolt holes. And if you feel any resistance when you're putting these bolts in, stop. You don't want to cross thread these bolts. Let's go back and forth. There we go. Now that all should be good. Now while we're here, I want to show you a little something on this wiring. 
This wiring has two plugs that are similar. Don't get them mixed up. The green and I guess that'd be yellow with a white tracer go over to the fuel sending unit. You want that to go to that side. Don't put it to this side. Okay, so now we're ready to put the fuel tank on. All right, now we're going to put the gas tank on, fuel tank. These little rubbers right here, you got to make sure that these rubbers are on and all the way in before you start putting your tank on. As you can see in the front, it has a couple of horseshoes, and that's what slides over those rubbers. So, you need to make sure your handlebars are straight. Line up those rubbers with the horseshoes. Make sure your wires aren't catching and getting stuck. Kind of wiggle it back and forth and kind of work it a little bit. And you'll feel it go in each time you move it. I went a little bit too far. There we go. Now I'm all lined up. Now you want to reach in here and grab a hold of the connector for your fuel gauge and then hook these two together. Like I said, make sure you get the right connector. All right. And then you want to take your hose, your vent hose from your tank. It's going to go through this uh, zip tie underneath the other hose, back around, and then we're going to slide it on the nipple. Then you can probably do this by hand, just squeeze the clamp and slide it on. Okay, now we're all buttoned up over here. Let's go to the other side. Okay, you can't mix these connectors up because they only go one way, so go ahead and start putting these connectors together. There's one. There's two, and then there's the little one up here. Sometimes you just have to do this by feel. All right, those three are in. I'm gonna try to show this if I can. Those connectors are all connected. So now we have the fuel pump connector and it goes to the front of this fuel pump. I'm just doing this by feel. I know it's in here somewhere. Right there, and it just snaps in. Now, I left my fuel line on the bike instead of putting it on the tank because if you leave it on the tank and you try to uh, slide this tank on, it wants to hang up and take a chance on breaking things. So while it's easier to get this line off when the tank's off, I'll take the line completely off and put it on the bike. Now, I just gotta line it up to my fuel pump. Snap it on. Okay, now we'll put this 10 millimeter bolt back in, that back here in the back. All right, tank secure. All right, now that we got everything together, all the electric lines on, the fuel lines are on, and all the covers are back in place, you want to turn your ignition on. You hear your fuel pump prime, turn it off, back on. Do this at least three times, off and on. I'm going to do mine four. Okay, now what we're going to do, and the reason I did that is because that line was empty of fuel. And, you know, it's probably going to have air pockets in it. And it may, you know, run rough just a little bit. But I'm going to start it up, and uh, we're going to check for fuel leaks, we're going to check for oil leaks.
Sounds good, no leaks, no fuel leaks, no oil leaks. So let's go ahead and start putting everything back on. All right, we'll put this front grill on first. Like I say, there's two five millimeter screws in the front and it's got these two Phillips on the sides All right, now I'm gonna go ahead and put my seat on. As you can see, I have an alarm system on here. I like having an alarm system on it. And my rack, I know people ask me about this rack and this rack has worked well. Uh, just uh, is a standard rack for Honda Grom. And it seems like it's worked well. I've had to do some fabrication on it to make it work. But anyway, on this seat, you just gotta take this, tuck it underneath there and then drop it down. Like that. I love this seat, by the way. It's comfortable. Uh, then we'll take our collared washer and our bolt. Seat is secure. I check these before you put them on. I didn't see this, but my nut thing came off. So I have to squeeze it together a little bit. I got a little bit too much. And then pop it on. That way it'll hold on a little better. All right. Then we'll put our screw in. All right, and we'll put our screw in place. And I'll move this out of the way. Now when you put this in, you want to squeeze these two together so that you don't have a gap between them. Make it look real nice. And then snug that one down. And we take our eight millimeter in the back. Tighten it 
tighten that down. And then we got this side panel. The way this side panel is going to go on is it's going to tuck under the seat. And then this has to snap in, this has to snap in, and this lip goes over the top of that. On this, you don't have to uh, worry about it. It'll just kind of spread a little bit and snap on when you do it. You'll see whenever you go to do it. You got to make sure that your little metal clips are on there. That one's on. And I think that's the only one. Yeah. So make sure your metal clip on your tank is on. Line it up. Snap in the front. Snap in the back. Just want to put your small bolt up here at the top. And then you got your other two there. And then one back here. So. All right. So now we'll go to the other side and do it. Okay, we'll check it, make sure our little nut fastener is on there, and it is. So we'll pop this on. We'll put our screw in it in the front. Turn this to get it out of the way. I'm kind of ambidextrous, so I can work with my left or my right. I work better with my right, I think. For some odd reason, I'm stronger with my left. I'm going to hold these two together, like I did on the other side. Same thing on this side, you want to tuck it up underneath, pop it in the front, pop it in the back, and we'll put the shortest one up here at the top. There you go, valve clearance check and adjustment on a 2023 Life and KPM 200. Complete procedure showing disassembly, the actual adjustment, and reassembly. Now, I showed a couple things in the video I really highly suggest getting because I think they're helpful. Just make a run to Harbor Freight, get a plug kit and a cap kit. I mean, you never know when you might need it. I don't remember the cost of these. I think I bought these. I think I was the first person. They actually had to go to the back to, to bring this out for me. They didn't have it on the shelf yet, but uh, I asked for it and they actually got it in that day. So I don't remember what I paid for, probably more than what they cost today. And the pit posse valve adjustment tool. I'm telling you what, as long as you got room, there are instances and I've had this where I couldn't use this tool because it was too bulky. It couldn't get it in there. It's hitting the frame and different things like that. But if you have the room, and this one here seems to have the room, get you a pit posse valve adjustment tool. It comes in a, has a 10 millimeter, a 8 millimeter, and a 9 millimeter. I think I've had to use all three of these, actually, sizes. And it really comes in handy. Like I said, you can put in a a uh, ratcheting wrench on the top of it and you can make fine little movements and it gets the wrench up high enough away to where you know this will drop down in the hole where your wrench is up high enough where you get a good tighten on it because a lot of times trying to get a wrench down in that hole to tighten that nut uh, is difficult. This here makes everything so much easier. <laughs> I mean and you can it's easy to hold the adjustment. You don't have to fiddle with a pair of pliers and have them slipping off and trying to squeeze it. You just sit here and hold this and then tighten it. It works great. That's my main point. So do yourself a favor and get you one of those. All right. Well, I appreciate you all coming along and watching. It was, I know it's a long video. I'm sorry. I'm going to try to edit down as much as I can. But uh, hopefully it was helpful to you. And that will do it for this one. So I'll see you on the next one. Thanks for watching.